Here we are. We're ready for another seven minutes on ITSP Magazine with a new short brand story. Today I'm joined by the one and only Teresa Lanowitz, the Chief Evangelist at Level Blue, the company that simplifies the security of your most valuable business assets by providing broad cybersecurity experience and award winning services. Welcome, Teresa. Hi, Sean. It is wonderful to be here with you. Uh, it's fabulous having you on, and I'm, I'm excited for this seven minutes. Uh, a topic that keeps coming up for me, uh, resilience and uh, balancing that with innovation. It seems resilience uh, has grown. I don't know if it's grown in importance, but certainly in conversation. It's a topic that I've heard many times over the past number of months, but it, it sits alongside the, the, the continued pressures for advanced innovations and like AI and even faster times to market. Um, so what are some of the things that you and the Level Blue team are seeing and hearing as you speak with some of your customers? Well, I think you're absolutely right. Resilience is one of those words that you hear all of the time. And I think we started hearing about resilience more in 2020 during the peak of the pandemic. Businesses of all types had to be resilient. They had to pivot their business model to serve their customers where their customers were. And what we're seeing now are some of the leftovers, some of the side effects of what started with that different business model pivot that moved to being more resilient. Some of the work that we've done at Level Blue, we came out with our big annual futures report. And what we found in that futures report is that 72% of governance teams inside of organizations do not know what cyber resilience is. Yet they know that innovation is causing more risk. 85% of them say innovation is causing risk. But 73% of them say, you know what, that innovation, we're willing to take that trade off in risk for innovation. But what we also found out is that digital transformation, a word that we heard, two words we heard a lot of during the pandemic, those projects are incomplete in many cases. And the residual effect of those incomplete digital transformation projects are causing a lack of cyber resilience. So this idea of cyber resilience is that you know the top number is that 72% of governance teams do not know what it is because they conflate it with cybersecurity. And it, on this point, I think last time we spoke, we, we touched on the, the idea that there's been a, a tighter coupling with the CIO and the CISO yeah, probably in this regard as well. And do you find that there's an understanding of resilience from an IT resilience perspective? And they and teams plan for that, but the cyber stuff is still a little unknown, uncertain in terms of what it really means, and they they just wing it for that. Is that, is that what's happening? <laughs> the, the technical term just wing it. Just wing it. I think yeah. what we see is that a lot of organizations hear the word cyber and they say, "Oh, CISO, anything that falls within your bailiwick, that's that's your your area of expertise." But with cyber resilience, it's about that whole organization, about that whole organization knowing how to be resilient when something unexpected happens, whether it is a cyber event, somebody takes down your network, whether it is a hurricane or some other type of man-made event that takes us offline. And it's about how that business can cope and still deliver on those service level agreements to their customers, whoever those customers are, whether you're in a business to business environment or business to consumer environment. And then we bring cybersecurity in there and we layer cybersecurity in, and that's specifically in the domain of this, the chief security officer, um, the CISO or the chief, chief information security officer. And uh, oftentimes that chief information security officer, that team does not necessarily have the right representation in with the CIO or the CTO to be able to talk to the whole organization. And I think that's something that we should expect to see change over the next year, couple of years or so as well, is that that, that CISO is now part of that direct report organization up to the CEO. And what, what do some of those conversations sound like? And I don't know if you have any, any, uh, customer, you don't have to name them, but any experiences uh, speaking with folks where that collaboration is well understood and they're putting forth uh, a plan that covers the broader spectrum of resilience? 
When I talk with our clients who say they have this understanding of cyber resilience and how important it is, they're the ones who say, one of them told me this great story. They were at an offsite and the topic of cyber resilience came up and the CEO said, okay, CIO, CTO, CISO, line of business, what are you doing for cyber resilience? And they all looked at the CISO and said, well, it's the CISO's problem. It's cyber, so therefore it's the CISO's problem. And that is one of the top problems is that from the top down, the idea of cyber resilience, the idea of what you have to do to keep your business running and how you can gain better security by aligning your business object objectives with your cybersecurity strategy and by taking on this idea of a whole organization understanding that when something goes down in the IT estate that we don't have a lot of visibility in, when something goes down in the IT estate, it's all of us who have to worry about bringing it back online. It's all of us who have to worry about continuing with those service level agreements to our clients. And so that, that idea of a, an, an offsite with the direct reports to the CEO and you know people not really understanding where cyber resilience lies that's a perfect example. And the CEO looked at them and said, well, wait a second. If this application goes down over here, that's not the problem with the CISO. You know, so how are you working together to get that application back up? And he said that it was at that moment that all of them said, oh, we need to work together. And I think we often say this. I mean, you and I have talked about this numerous times. We say this. But in reality, it's something that is, it's, it's fairly difficult to really comprehend because we're so interested and so concerned about running our day-to-day -day business that oftentimes we don't take a step back and look at what we need to think about for the future. Teresa, thank you so much for uh, this seven minutes on ITSP Magazine. I'm going to encourage everybody to look at uh, levelblue.com slash futures report to download a copy of that report. Thank you. Thanks so much.